All right, so I was checking out this balance sheet the other day and I see this thing called Goodwill, right? And I'm like, what does that mean? Is that like the amount they're gonna donate to charity or something? So I read up about it, it's totally not the case. Um, as it turns out, Goodwill is something that gets calculated and it only comes into play when one company buys another company. And it's kind of interesting when you break it down because even though it sounds like a good thing, well, I don't know, it, it's kind of up for debate. So, uh, but first let's do a quick review of the balance sheet. So remember we got three sections, assets, liabilities, and equity. Assets are stuff that you own. Liabilities are stuff that you owe to other people. And if you take everything you have and then subtract everything you owe, what you got left is your net worth, which is also called equity. So that's the basic accounting equation. And usually they like to rearrange it like this with assets on the left and liabilities and equity on the right. All right, so where would you find goodwill on this? Well, it actually goes in the asset section, uh, but you'll only see it there if the company has purchased another company in the past. So let's take a closer look at the different types of assets that a company might have. All right, well, first we have tangible assets. So this would include stuff like cash, accounts receivable, uh, any type of financial assets, and it would also include physical stuff like, you know, equipment, property, inventory, you know, anything you can touch. Uh, so tangible assets are just anything physical or financial. And uh, these type of assets are usually a little bit easier to understand and it's, and it's not too hard to figure out what they're worth in the market. Um, but then on the other side, we got intangible assets. So this kind of stuff is like patents, you know, trademarks, software, secret recipes, even customer relationships. So these intangible assets are things which have value, but you know, they're not physical in nature and, and they're not financial instruments. Um, sometimes it's harder to recognize these assets and, uh, and it's harder to assign values for them. But I mean, at least we can identify these assets and try to assign some value uh, based on some estimate of how much money they might make for us in the future. Um, all right, so everything we've listed so far Let's call these the identifiable assets. And let's just say for the sake of example that these all add up to $1.5 million. Um, all right, now let's say we're looking at buying this company. Now, there could be some other stuff. There could be some other intangible stuff that we may want to think about. So what do I mean? Well, um, maybe they got a really good reputation. Maybe they got awesome employees. Or maybe this company has a product, uh, but if we put it with one of our products, then we can combine them into some kind of super awesome product and just dominate the market with it. You know, uh, they call that synergy. So maybe that potential for synergy could be another one of these things, you know, one of these intangible things that we think about. So, but again, it's hard to assign values to this other stuff. But, you know, we're pretty sure that we're willing to pay more than 1.5 million dollars to buy this company you know because we have a good feeling about this other stuff you know we think the value is more than uh, just the sum of the identifiable assets on on paper so so let's say we think it over and we decide okay you know what um, instead of 1.5 we're willing to pay two million dollars to buy this company so it's like I see your 1.5 million dollars in identifiable assets but I'll raise you an extra $500,000 for this other stuff that I have a good feeling about. You know? And and that's really where the goodwill comes into the picture. So so let's say we end up making the deal for two mil. Well, that extra payment of $500,000, that becomes the goodwill. So after we consolidate both companies, now when I look at the asset section of my balance sheet, we should see a line called goodwill with $500,000 in it. All right, cool. Uh, let's look at an example. So here's the balance sheet for Facebook uh, back in 2014. So we could see stuff like cash, accounts receivable, property, and uh, here's the goodwill line. And the number is like 17.9, almost $18 billion. Oh my goodness, yeah. Um, these numbers are in millions, by the way. Um, so that is a whole lot of goodwill. 
Um, how did that number get so high? Well, remember that goodwill only comes into play when a company buys another company, so this means they must have bought somebody. Well, who did they buy? Actually, Facebook's bought like quite a few companies, but one of them is called WhatsApp. Um, and we can look at the specific numbers behind that deal. Uh, so, so how much did they pay for WhatsApp? Well, that's this number right here, total fair value consideration. And it looks like they paid over 17 billion. We can look at the breakdown here and see what kind of assets WhatsApp had. Uh, so they've listed a couple, um, we got users, trade names, technology. So we can add up these assets and subtract the liabilities and we get net identifiable assets of around $1.8 billion. Okay, but they paid over $17 billion for them. So let's do the math on the goodwill. So we take the purchase price and subtract the total value of net identifiable assets. And we end up with a goodwill of over $15 billion. So, I mean, that's that's a pretty big number. I mean, the, the biggest chunk of that entire purchase is goodwill. So it's like Facebook, you know, they, they looked at WhatsApp and said, hey, I, I see your $1.8 billion in net identifiable assets, but I'll raise you $15 billion on top of that for this intangible other stuff that I think, you know, is going to be valuable. You know, so, so how does Facebook... Um, justify that purchase well let's see what they say about it um, so these are their words so expected synergies potential monetization strategic advantage uh, expansion of mobile messaging okay I mean do you think that's worth 15 billion I don't know maybe maybe it is like how are they gonna monetize they're gonna start charging people to use whatsapp you know they're gonna start putting ads in there you know they start using whatsapp for mobile payments are they gonna put you know a chat bot functionality in WhatsApp, uh, you know, maybe they just want to buy WhatsApp to, you know, not have to compete with Facebook Messenger. I, mean, I don't know, I'm just making this stuff up, right? It's, it's, it's pretty vague, and, and I guess that's the point, is that it's kind of hard to tell. You know, but there is a lot of potential. I mean, a lot of people do use WhatsApp, so maybe Facebook will eventually be able to turn that $15 billion that they spent in goodwill uh, into profit. But, what if it doesn't turn out as planned? Like, what if all of a sudden WhatsApp gets hacked and there's like this big security leak and everyone just stops using WhatsApp and starts using WeChat instead? Uh, well, if Facebook can no longer expect to turn the profits uh, that they, you know, originally expected with WhatsApp, then, well, then now what happens to that $15 billion goodwill asset on the balance sheet? Well, that, you know, technically they should reduce the value of that goodwill asset. And this process would be called goodwill impairment. And technically, public companies are supposed to check at least once a year if they need to do this. So, so say may, maybe Facebook needs to take that $15 billion number down to $10 billion. Okay, so sure, they can reduce that number on the balance sheet. But on the flip side, there's actually another consequence. So I don't want to talk about the income statement too much because we'll do it in a different video. Uh, but the income statement is where companies report profit. And if you reduce the goodwill number on the balance sheet, that also needs to be recorded as an expense on the income statement, which has the effect of reducing overall profit. So say, for example, Facebook was originally going to report $6 billion in profit for the year, but then they have to do this goodwill impairment for $5 billion. Well, now that reduces their profit down to only $1 billion. Um, and that doesn't look as good to investors, so companies tend to not really want to do this goodwill impairment thing too often. All right, cool, let's uh, summarize. So goodwill is only recorded on the balance sheet when a company buys another company. So if you're looking at a balance sheet for a company that's never bought another company, then you shouldn't see a goodwill line. Um, the goodwill from a purchase is calculated as the difference between the total purchase price and the net identifiable assets. Goodwill is recorded as an asset, but it is intangible. It's not separately identifiable. It's um, highly subjective and really difficult to value. So it's really hard to know if you're getting the number right. So the next time you see a really, really big number in the goodwill line, I mean, just remember that it's not really a hard asset. And you gotta ask yourself, like, how is this company actually planning on turning this number into real cash in the future? Alright, cool. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, and uh, yeah, see you in the next video.